5, 4, 3, 2, unité, top. Allumage vulgaire. The history of space exploration is fascinating. Allumage confirmé. Top. Allumage EAP, décollage. At the Free University of Berlin, with support of the German Research Foundation DFG, a group of young researchers looks at European astroculture and extraterrestrial life in the 20th century. They focus specifically on European perspective of spaceflight and their relationship between science and fiction. We analyze how reflection about space changed in consideration of the real space exploration. In the 1960s and 70s, the conviction prevailed that the conquest of space was only a matter of years. Mankind would settle on foreign planets and build cities in the orbit. Yet after the first mission succeeded to step on the moon and as the end of the Apollo program came close, disillusion spread along with the Vietnam War and the oil crisis. The Club of Rome changed the perception. The limitation of our planet's resources grew to an enormous issue. The space hype was over, and the public discussion influenced the space program. Pressure groups struggled for more schools to be built instead of shooting astronauts to the stars. In the end, as we all know, the Apollo program was stopped prematurely. True fans of the space age would not allow themselves to be led astray by such considerations. The Pioneer and Voyager probes even carried golden plaques with information about human mankind, should any extraterrestrials find them someday. It wasn't officially a part of the mission. It was something which was almost an afterthought when it became understood that the Pioneer um, spacecraft would leave the solar system. They were very sincere, very genuine in their intention to uh, establish some kind of communication with intelligent life forms or perhaps humankind in, in the distant future. I think there are worse ways to spend money than to um, uh, look for life um, beyond our planet. There was a lot of science fiction around. Not only a handful of science fiction fans even suspected spaceflight to solve problems on Earth. Gerald O'Neill, a physician from Princeton, suggested space habitats that would probably help to survive critical situations on Earth or even a nuclear war. Within the Space Shuttle and the Soyuz program, the superpowers even celebrated reconciliation in space. Talking about space exploration, we think of the former Soviet Union and the United States at first. Europe's share was rather modest for a long time. In the end, the Europeans created their own profile with the launch of the Ariane. Meanwhile, missions like Envisat, for example, provide crucial data from the orbit. Galileo supports navigation on Earth with a precise positioning system. New paths of communication, TV channels and data transmission indicate that a lot of pioneer work was done. The results nowadays perfectly fit into daily life. In fact, future has taken place all around, even if it's not precisely the way we thought of before. Might be that we are already living in space age. That's a question of interpretation. A lot of bygone futures came into real, indeed. They are part of our daily lives in such a degree that we don't discuss them anymore. Wenn man das zum Kriterium macht, dann leben wir sehr wohl im Space Age, wenn sie sich alte Zukunftsszenarien vornehmen. If you think about fictions like permanent cities on the moon or colonization of Mars, we are not living in a Space Age at all. Die Siedlung des Mondes, die Kolonialisierung des Mars, dann Anyway, a lot of those fictions in visual and aesthetic design that we still think of as futuristic derive from the 1960s. A special kind of European astroculture included. Boy, the KDI is
Yes. Ik